Ladies and gentlemen, very pleased to welcome Lena Landsberg up against Pani Kjansad. It's an all-Swedish affair this weekend. How yeah. do you feel about this one? Has that added a bit of extra spice to it? Um, I wouldn't say extra spice, but um, a little bit more drama, maybe. <laughs> do you know her well in that regard? She'd been on the scene for a while and someone on your radar? Yes, she was actually the first the first opponent I had in MMA ever. Uh, she was 3-0 in professional MMA. And I started training MMA like when we booked that fight. <laughs> that was back in 2012, right? So yeah. you, you guys must both be very, very different people. Uh, yeah. How much do you think she's evolved? What, what have you noticed about her? What's impressed you? Um. A lot, definitely, but she was a great fighter. Uh, sorry for that. Even at that time, she was a really technical and great fighter, and her boxing was was great. Even then, she started doing boxing early. Um, so we're definitely not the same fighter, any of us. Um, so this will be totally different. How keen are you to just unleash those elbows on her? Is that what you're envisioning? Uh, the KO with the elbow? So that's something I don't want to talk about. We'll see. That's a surprise. <laughs> we haven't seen you in the Octagon since uh, yeah. early in 2020. How much have you been itching to get back in there? How tough has it been to, to kind of watch from the sidelines for a little while? Um... Yeah, you know, I, I've had things to do. I gave birth to a, a baby girl. She's one now. So, um, you know, it's life has been the way it was supposed to be. But right now, I feel like I'm amazed, more fun than ever, actually. And I'm more relaxed than ever. So right now, it just feels like time. How big of a challenge has that been for you to kind of get back on it, get strong again? Uh, and do you feel like you've gained something now? I have definitely. Um, if I knew that it was such a natural doping to become a mom, I would have done that earlier. Definitely. <laughs> what kind of a fight do you see panning out with her in this one in terms of your styles? Do you think it's going to be a fun one? Do you think it's going to be a grind? It will definitely, it will be a, a war. I'm sure of that. Um, so it's definitely something that the fans don't want to miss. And what's the response been like in Swedish media? What What is the vibe like ahead of this one? Uh, actually, you know, the UFC made it official really, really late, like last week. Uh, and when, when uh, Panny decided to to tell about the fight there was nothing signed uh, to start with so it wasn't wasn't even a fight um and i talked to the ufc and decided not to to tell anything about it until they made it official so until now it hasn't been much media at all but i guess it will explode tomorrow how excited are you about the division i mean you still have a pretty awesome ranking at number 11 yeah. Are you looking to make up for lost time this year? Are you, are you looking to stay really active? Yeah, definitely. I really need to. I would love to come back in October, maybe. Awesome. And uh, yeah. is there one person in your career who you just really respect, who you feel like you definitely have to fight one day, like any of like the kind of big names like Misha Tate or anyone like that? Uh, it's a lot of big names. The only person that I'm thinking that I really need to fight is someone I do not respect. <laughs> and that's Aspen Lad. Oh, really? Yeah, she seems yeah. to talk quite a lot. Yeah, she does. And I fight her in the, in the past. Uh, and she's not really that well behaved. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How do you mean? Uh, I just mean that she she did disrespect me in that fight. It was a really strange fight, you know, just sitting on top of me screaming and they stopped the fight for like nothing because of screaming more than anything else. 
and yes, afterwards, you know, when you don't say hi, you don't, you know, I don't, I just want to give her some, some elbows. Is that the perfect one then? I mean, seven versus 11, that would kind of settle two things for you. Number one, I guess you yeah. write up those rankings and number two, you get to settle a score. So is that, is that yeah. the plan on the microphone, do you think? I think that's the plan, yeah. <laughs> I think the fans, <laughs> the fans definitely respond pretty well to that kind of thing. Uh, do you think that uh, MMA in Europe is going through a golden time at the moment? I mean, we look at, you know, we've got an all Swedish fight. We've got a lot of European champions. Uh, Hamza yeah. Khimaev is making so many headlines. Like how buzzing is Sweden about him and, and how good is he, do you think? Uh, he's so, so good. And the, the media in Sweden is all over him. And yeah, I think in Europe, now is the perfect time when COVID is no longer something we need to talk about in Sweden and in Europe. If you compare it to to the US, it's still a, a big difference. So let's hope for some more shows in Europe soon and also in Sweden. Are you kind of proud about? Uh, I don't know if it was the who was tweeting about it the leader but like are you kind of proud of the way they handled it i know fighters have a lot to say when it comes to covid because it's just been so yeah. disruptive for training for shows yeah but uh, yeah do you think it was well handled for sweden it seems like at least everyone got to carry on living right yeah definitely and it was it was something that got questioned to start with when we didn't like we didn't do what so many other countries did but still when you look at it now we're still better off than so many others in so many ways uh, are you an alex gustafson fan are you pleased to see that he's coming back i am he's uh, he's one of the the biggest and one of the first from sweden so definitely who do you think's been the biggest influence on your career um, I have to say my coach and boyfriend, Akira Karasani, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good shout. Um, yeah. Did you see that interview that uh, was given about uh, Ronda, basically, uh, Juliana Pena? Maybe she's trying to sell a super fight. What did you make of that? Did you respect the, the fact that she's maybe trying to set up a fight or was it unfair on Ronda? What's your opinion? It was definitely unfair. It's, you know, <laughs> she could have done that in so many other ways. Um, I don't know why, why, you know, talk shit about Rhonda. She could just, you know, tell her that she wants, you know, the, that she wants her back, that she wants the, I don't know. It's no, not okay. Uh, is, is Juliana, of course she has the belt. So everybody wants to fight her, but did that make you think, okay. I'd, I'd like to I'd like to show you some elbows one day and take and, and does, does it open up the division now because there was an air of invincibility about Amanda maybe and now now it seems like everybody can can win yeah it's definitely a big change um now we'll see what happened between her and and uh, Amanda as well it might go back to the way it, it was a couple of months ago but yeah, of course, it was such a big upset and I don't think it will end the same way if they fight each other again. So yeah, just let's see what happens. Who do you think you're the most dangerous matchup for in the top five right now? Uh, for, uh, for Juliana, you mean? For you, if, if you for anyone you, in the top five, who do you think you're, you're very dangerous for in terms of your style? And that I'm very dangerous for uh, Aspen Ladd. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I mean, yeah. in this game, if you if if you want something like that, that that's the best way to get it, yeah. right? Awesome, Definitely. Lena Landsberg. Thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Good luck. Respect.